from Nakamori Seicha, Kabusecha, from Mie. I am excited for this. So Kabusecha is kind of like, uh, you could say kind of like Yokuro, in a sense that it is a shade covered tea, though it's generally not shaded as long, maybe for three weeks, approximately, is I guess the average, where ma gyokuro and matcha are shaded for like uh, a month and a half. And uh, rather than have kind of like a scaffolding set up where you uh, shade from a height above the bush, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Kabusecha, the bushes are basically wrapped, uh, or it's, at least it's more localized. Um, it's uh, pretty often you see like deep steamed Kabusecha, so Fukamushi Kabusecha. And I think that might be the case here as well, and I say that because there's a lot of smaller flakes um, in here. I wish I had some paper. Surely I do. Let's just use an old invoice. So, yeah, I guess I would say, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. To lift it up. So on that side, it's mostly like flake. And on that side, it's, well, for the most part, it's needles. Um, I would say it's like 40% needle, 60% flake. <clears throat> For me, that's, that kind of indicates uh, deeper steaming. Or it's the bottom of the bag. Uh, you never really know, I guess. The colors are generally green. I don't know if it's the lighting. But there's like a, a, a kind of a uh, something brown about it too well let me have a closer look here okay so Japanese green tea colors of so dark olive and moss green are there olive yellow is there I think maybe it is just my eyes playing tricks on me with the brown or it's, it's not bright enough in here that you can really accurately see. <clears throat> it's got a really nice freshness to it, but it's not a very powerful aroma. Somehow I'm reminded of, it's like the intensity of flavored sparkling water, like Pellegrino. Yeah. Other than it being kind of sweet smelling, but sweet smelling like what? The best I'm gonna get is lime cordial. So fruity, like lime, but very, yes, yeah, sweet as well. So like bar lime is kind of what I mean when you make cocktails or mocktails. It's just something you can easily buy.
and uh, well, I guess I'm gonna measure up the water, one to 75. I'll cool it down for two minutes before we start. And uh, yeah, back in a second. Ooh, it's hot on the fingers. Alexa, start a timer for two minutes. Okay. Fragrant and sweet. That's a good sign, because the other ones didn't seem very aromatic. A lot of the other senses in this stage. There is a mosquito net and or synthetic and or plastic tent aroma. Plastic tent in the summer heat. Then there's something vegetal behind that. Something green, something leafy, something sweet. That's just water. Something minerally, something wet, rocky, also a little stinky. So if you go to the mountains, you go to a, I guess not even needs, doesn't need to be the mountains, I guess just next to, next to rivers where you might find some stagnant water and or like areas where there might be like a puddle of grass, a puddle with grass in it that's been sitting there. Or just, yeah, wet, wet rocks. Oh, fuck. You don't normally want to do that. Alexa, stop. I don't know what I was thinking. Going crazy. Or maybe you do normally want to do that. You know, the agitation might be really good. Um, but in my, in my testing, you don't. It's not fair. Um, it's also not predictable. That's the reason why people don't do it, I think. You can measure time, you can measure the ratio, you can measure the temperature, but it's hard to measure how much you can disturb something and reproduce that. So this is pretty fragrant. Uh, Buttery, buttery corn, uh, or buttery edamame beans. And then something else, something which needs more thought. It's a very specific aroma for people from where I'm from. I think, maybe it's not. We have the Calgary Stampede here, we have mini donuts, and mini donuts are made directly in front of you. It's basically batter and hot oil, and they can give you the option of just sugar or cinnamon sugar, and when you get them, it's just super hot, and you taste, yeah, fried dough, basically. But it's not really dough. So fried, yeah, fried batter. Some of them are undercooked, or I don't want to, maybe not necessarily undercooked, but they are battery tasting. And this to me smells like that oily batter, which is, in my head, that's a very good thing. I really like those donuts. Um, Mini donut tea. That's pretty interesting. Let's 
Yeah, and uh, it's just with regular sugar, if you're wondering. There's no cinnamon notes in this. It smells pretty potent. And, I mean, that's kind of what you expect, I guess, because Cabo Secha is shaded. You should get some concentration of umami. Uh, I'm gonna try and do the next bag of this as a one to 10 ratio. See how that goes. Nice. It's uh, one of those types of teas that comes at you at like a wall and there's just immediate flavor and that flavor coasts for a little bit. That's all my brain processed so far. On second thought, there's there's kind of two things that happen, happen simultaneously. The wall comes, but and then there's also, there is a ramping up of flavor too, uh, which is cool. I feel uh, it has more potential than what I'm seeing. Nothing, I, would, I wouldn't say anything bad about it. Still smells like mini donuts. It's above average in terms of the power of the flavor, uh, the concentration of the aroma and, and those kind of things. Mm, there's no astringency. It's heavier than average and the finish is the weakest part. Uh, I guess I would say it's aroma six, concentration of flavor six, astringency zero, finish is five, weight is six. So it's just lacking a little bit in that department. So it is uh, as interesting as it is, it's all still rather tight. Like the flavors, they uh, you need to look for them. They, they don't just jump out at you. I think it's a good tea to represent Japanese green tea. Um, even even if it was just brewed like this, it kind of has everything going for it. If you're gonna try and typecast Sencha, for example, no, it's not Sencha, but if you're okay, if you're gonna try and typecast Japanese tea in, in one tea, I think this one is probably a pretty good example of it. I don't think anyone would be disappointed to get this. I'm gonna try and drink it from this cup. a little bit brighter.
the sweetness stands out a little bit more. Uh, those kind of cups, they have uh, they have flavor they impart in the tea. It's like a very earthy, well, clay flavor. Uh, so they change the tea quite a bit. In some cases for better, in some cases for worse. In this case, for the better. It's not only that, but... Uh, how do we put it? Not something that I really want to get super into right now because I don't think anyone really gives a shit. But uh, the cup over here, because it's such a narrow circle, when it meets your mouth, the tea is going to go to a specific spot. This one is wider, so the tea should, in theory, go to a different spot in your mouth. Um, hitting a different spot immediately is going to change the flavor. This one will also suck out heat faster than this so you know drinking it at different temperatures could be the reason why the sweetness the change in sweetness is so drastic because it's probably five six could be ten degrees cooler than that yeah prefer it from the, the clay cup Okay, interesting. Uh, Ikea? So, why would, I, why would I say Ikea? It's like composite wood smell. And wood glue? Wood glue has a weird sweet smell to it. Um, it's interesting, nonetheless. Not, not, not bad. And then it's green, green smelling. Green, sweet, kind of like wood glue, kind of like sawdusty furniture. Okay, I think I'm going to pause. I'm going to get set up to do this much stronger and I'll just drop two cents on that one too okay interesting so uh, smelling the tea leaf from inside of this and with this I can form more of a like a seal if you will like the aroma has really nowhere to go but inside my nose and unlike a teacup I guess some of it could escape from the sides of my my nose um, I feel like I can smell it a little bit better from this and what came to mind is a very rocky gravelly mineral note and the I guess the aroma of theanine what you get when you smell gyokuro this uh, very specific smell that's strong so it's like theanine and gravel basically my point um, so this is uh, 6.2 grams of tea and then 62 grams of water um, it's maybe still just a little too hot uh, I think I'll wait a second longer I will steep it for two minutes and and then probably love it. I, I don't see why I wouldn't. So, okay, actually I think that's probably fine now. Um, Alexa, start a timer for two minutes. Interesting. It has this uh, custardy 
note. Custard I only ever get from like one tea, which is uh, yellow tea from China. I say one tea, I mean one family of tea. It's eggy and sweet and like, so cream, egg and sweet, cream, egg and sugar. Uh, very specifically, I would say Portuguese egg custard tarts is what comes to mind when I smell that. I think I remember reading once that if your water is above 60 degrees Celsius, theanine is destroyed. And I don't know if that's true, but I've been telling everybody that it is. <coughs> yeah. So I hope if, uh, I hope to learn that. I guess I could just Google it as well. But it'd be nice if I just learned it spontaneously. So if you are watching this and you know the answer, don't be shy. I would love to know. So. Alexa, stop. at the color as I was pouring it and just it's not quite as blue as Gyokuro is when I say blue I mean like teal which for me is blue enough to call it blue I suppose this is what we get um, Yeah, it's a complicated aroma. I think I think I might still say it, it has some semblance of custard tart. It smells sweet. It doesn't really smell like Gyokuro. It's uh, quite yellow looking to my eyes. I mean, it's it has some green. This is like this is not an Yuiro. It's where you can't decide if it's green or yellow, and it looks a little different on camera. But uh, lots of particulate in here. Yep, that's got a lot of umami. It's also got a lot of plant flavor. It tastes like someone had plant food and sprayed it in your mouth. It's got this really intense plant-like, couldn't say what, generic plant fertilizer green smell flavor. The depth of flavor is like a 6 out of 10. Um, it, there's a lot of bitterness, actually. And it has a little bit of astringency, too. At the finish, it's conjuring up some skunky, uh, skunky aromas. Yeah, it's got it's got a lot of bitterness, so I think someone would have to be okay with bitterness 
I'm pretty tolerant, and I think it's pretty bitter. Um, it's stronger than it smells. I think I would say the aroma is a seven. The concentration is an eight. The astringence is a four. The finish is an eight. And the depth, you know, the, you know, the weight, like a tea. The weight is heavy. I would say it's got to be seven. That's kind of a guess. I didn't really try to think about that when I was drinking it. And then the depth. Of flavor is a six so there's much more deeper teas deeper tasting teas but those are not usually kapusecha so I wonder because I, I to be honest I, I don't drink a lot of kapusecha um, a couple of them that I've tried in the past at like competition level they've been good and you can brew them like Gyokuro um, so I wonder what it is someone looks for in Kabusecha that Gyokuro doesn't have. Or or yeah, what's the re what's the reason to drink Kabusecha over Gyokuro or over Sencha? That'd be one question that I hope to hear the answer to. At least just an opinion. Um when I brewed it as uh the the, the lighter tea. I think I would say I would, I would while while though it was quite fine, I would probably rather drink a good sencha if it was for aromatics. Um, I guess it doesn't have the power though. But if I was drinking tea for power, I would drink like americano style which is the large format of Gyokuro. So I would just want to have a Gyokuro from Asahina or something that allows me to brew it weekly like that while still having good flavor. Um, and if I brewed it strong like this, well, I would just rather drink Gyokuro. Uh, the bitterness is a turnoff for me. Mm. Yeah, but anyway, it was uh, it was good. I think this was one of the better one of the better teas in the selection so far. So cool. I think I'm done for tonight though. I'm gonna relax for a bit. Thanks for watching.